California CDL DMV Handbook Audio Edition. The best way to learn is to listen. In this section 5.2 and 5.3. We begin with section 5.2 in the dual air brake system. Most heavy duty vehicles use dual air brake systems for safety. A dual air brake system has two separate air brake systems which use a single set of brake controls. Each system has its own air tanks, hoses, lines, etc. One system typically operates the regular brakes on the rear axle or axles. The other system operates the regular brakes on the front axle and possibly one rear axle. Both systems supply air to the trailer, if there is one. The first system is called the primary system. The other is called the secondary system. Before driving a vehicle with a dual air system, allow time for the air pressure to build up at a minimum of 100 psi. Pressure in both the primary and secondary systems. Watch the primary and secondary air pressure gauges, or needles if the system has two needles in one gauge. Now pay attention to low air pressure, warning light, and buzzer. The warning light and buzzer should shut off when air pressure is in both systems rises to a valve set by the manufacturer. This valve must be greater than 55 psi. The warning light and buzzer should come on before the air pressure drops below 55 psi in either system. If this happens while driving, you should stop right away and safely park the vehicle. If one air system is very low on pressure, either the front or the rear brakes will not be operating fully. This means it will take you longer to stop. Bring the vehicle to a safe stop and have the air brakes fixed right away. Now the one-way check valve. One-way check valve, this device allows air to flow in one direction only. All air tanks on an air brake vehicle must have a check valve located between the air compressor and the first reservoir. This check valve keeps air from going out of the air compressor if it develops a leak. Inspecting air brake systems. You should use the seven step inspection procedure described in section two to inspect your vehicle. There is more to inspect on a vehicle with air brakes than one without them. The components are discussed below in the order they fit into the seven step method. During step two, engine compartment checks. Check air compressor drive belt, if compressor has a drive belt. If the air compressor is belt driven, check the condition and tightness of the belt. It should be in good condition. Now during your step five on your walk around inspection, check slack adjusters on the S-CAM brakes. Park on level ground and chalk the wheels to prevent the vehicle from moving. Release the parking brakes so you can move the slack adjusters. Use gloves and pull hard on each slack adjuster that you can reach. If a slack adjuster moves more than about one inch where the push rod attaches to it, it probably needs adjustment. Now adjust it or have it adjusted. Vehicles with too much brake slack can be very hard to stop. Out of adjustment brakes are the most common problem found in roadside inspections. Now be safe. Check the slack adjusters. All vehicles built since 1994 have automatic slack adjusters. Even though automatic slack adjusters adjust themselves during full brake applications, they must be checked. Automatic adjusters should not have to be manually adjusted except when performing maintenance on the brakes and during installation of slack adjusters. In a vehicle equipped with automatic adjusters, when the pushrod stroke exceeds the legal brake adjustment limit, it is an indication that the mechanical problem exists in the adjuster itself a problem with the related foundation brake components, or that the adjuster was improperly installed. The manual adjustment of an automatic adjuster to bring a brake pushrod stroke within legal limits is generally masking a mechanical problem and is not fixing it. Further routine adjustment of most automatic adjusters will likely result in premature wear of the adjuster itself. It is recommended that when brakes equipped with the automatic adjusters are found to be out of adjustment, the driver take the vehicle to a repair facility as soon as possible to have the problem corrected. The manual adjustment of automatic slack adjusters is dangerous because it may give the driver a false sense of security regarding the effectiveness of the brake system. The manual adjustment of an automatic adjuster should be used as a temporary measure to correct the adjustment as in an emergency situation as it is likely the brake will soon be back out of adjustment since the procedure usually does not fix the underlying adjustment problem. Note: Automatic slack adjusters are made by different manufacturers and not all operate the same. Therefore, a specific manufacturer's service manual should be consulted prior to troubleshooting a brake adjustment problem. Okay. How to check your brake drums, linings, and hoses. Brake drums or discs 
must not have cracks longer than half the width of the friction area. Linings must not be loose or soaked with oil or grease and must not be worn dangerously thin, like less than a quarter inch. Mechanical parts must be in place, not broken or missing. Check the air hoses connected to the brake chambers to make sure that they are not cut or worn due to rubbing. Okay, next step, step seven, your final air brake check. Note, all the air brake system tests in this section are considered important and each can be considered critical part of the in-cab brake test. The items marked with an asterisk in this section are required for testing purposes during the vehicle inspection portion of the CDL skills test and I'll let you know when those come. They may be performed in any order as long as they are performed correctly and effectively. If these items are not demonstrated and the parameters for each test are not verbalized correctly, it is considered an automatic failure of the vehicle inspection portion of the skills test. Do the following checks instead of hydraulic brake check shown in section 2, step 7, check brake system. Okay, this is important. Test low pressure warning signal. To perform this test, the vehicle must have enough air pressure so low pressure warning signal is off. The engine may be on or off. However, the key must be in the on or battery charge position. Next, begin fanning off the air pressure by rapidly applying and releasing the foot brakes. So pump your brakes. The low pressure warning signal or buzzer or light or flag will generally activate when the air pressure falls between 55 and 75 psi. What is that? 55 and 75 psi. But may activate at a higher pressure like 80 to 85 psi, if specified by the manufacturer. So the low air pressure warning signal must activate before the air supply pressure drops below 55 psi in the air tank. The vehicle is not safe to operate if the low air warning signal does not activate before the air supply pressure drops below 55 psi. Now for testing purposes, identify and verbalize the pressure at which the low air pressure warning signal activates and identify the parameters at which this should occur. On large buses, it is common for the low pressure warning device to signal at 80 to 85 psi. If testing in a large bus, identify the parameters mentioned above, 55 to 75 psi, and inform the examiner that your vehicle's low pressure warning devices are designed to activate at a higher pressure. If the warning signal does not work, you could lose air pressure and not know it. This could cause sudden emergency braking in a single circuit air system. In dual systems, the stopping distance will be increased. Only limited braking can be done before the spring brakes come on. Now note, farm labor vehicles and type 1 school buses must be equipped with both audible and visible type warning devices. Okay, this is on your test also. Check that spring brakes come on automatically. So you chalk the wheels, you release the parking valve and the tractor protection valve and begin reducing the air pressure by stepping on and off the brake pedal. When the air tank pressure has fallen between 20 and 45 PSI on a tractor trailer combination vehicle, the tractor protection valve and parking brake valve should be closed or popped out. On other combination vehicle types and single vehicle types, the parking brake valve should pop out. For testing purposes, identify and verbalize the approximate pressure at which the brakes activate and the parameters at which this should occur. Note, the parking brake valve will not pop out on buses that are equipped with an emergency parking air reservoir. If your bus is equipped with an emergency park brake air tank, you must perform the spring brake test for triple reservoir valves to check the automatic action of the spring brakes. Now the spring brake test for triple reservoir vehicles. If the parking brake valve does not pop out when the air pressure has been reduced approximately 20 psi, you must demonstrate that the spring brakes have activated. And to do this, you must remove the wheel chocks if necessary, leave the parking brake valve in the open position, with the engine running, put the vehicle in a forward gear and attempt to drive forward. The spring brakes should drag and prevent the vehicle from easily moving forward. If the spring brakes do not prevent the vehicle from easily moving forward, your driving test will be postponed. Now note, 
This test must only be performed on a single vehicle designed with an isolated parking brake reservoir. Do not perform this test on a combination vehicle. Check the rate of air pressure buildup. Okay, this is how we check the rate of the air pressure buildup. To perform this test, the engine must be running at normal operating idle, typically 600 to 900 RPMs. Observe the air gauge to determine if the pressure builds at a proper rate. For dual air systems, the pressure should build for approximately 85 to 100 PSI within 45 seconds. For single air systems, you know, like before 1975, I doubt any of you will be driving one, the pressure should build from approximately 50 to 90 PSI within 3 minutes. Pretty slow. Now, for testing purposes, you must verbalize the parameters of the test and identify if the vehicle met the appropriate standards. Now, how to test air leakage rate. There are two tests, and they are as follows. The static leakage test. With a basically fully charged air system, turn off the engine, release all the brakes, and let the system settle. Time for one minute on your stopwatch. The air pressure should not drop more than 2 PSI for single vehicles, 3 PSI for combination of two vehicles, and 5 PSI for combination of three or more vehicles. Important! Remember this. The maximum air loss rate for a combination of two or more vehicles is 2 PSI if the towed vehicle are not equipped with air brakes. An air loss greater than those listed above indicate a problem in the parking system and repairs are needed before the operation of this vehicle. Okay, next we're going to learn how to do the applied leakage test. This is important. How to do the applied leakage test. To perform this test, the vehicle's air pressure should be built up to a maximum pressure or where the air compressor shuts off. With the air pressure built up, shut off the engine, chalk the wheels if necessary, release the parking brake, and the tractor protection valve and firmly apply the foot brake. Then hold the foot brake for one minute and time it. After stabilization of the air gauge, check the air gauge to see that the air pressure drops no more than 3 PSI in the one minute. That's on a single vehicle. Or 4 PSI in one minute on a combination vehicle. And listen for air leaks. You must identify how much air the system lost and verbalize the maximum air loss rate allowed for your vehicle. So that's 3 PSI for a single vehicle, 4 for a combination of two vehicles, and 6 for a combination of three or more. Important note, the maximum air loss rate for a combination of two or more vehicles is 3 PSI if towed vehicle are not equipped with air brakes. An air loss greater than those listed above indicates a problem in the parking system and repairs are needed before the operation of the vehicle. Note, for testing purposes, you must be able to demonstrate this test and verbalize the allowable air loss for your vehicle. So it's something you're going to have to memorize. If the air loss is too much, check for air leaks and fix any that are identifiable. For testing purposes, identify if the air loss rate is too much. Next is the air compressor governor cutout pressure test. So how to test your on-off switch of your air compressor. To perform this test, the air pressure for the vehicle must be rising when the engine is running. Governor cutout occurs when the needle stops rising. The air compressor should cut out no higher than 140 PSI. So you want your air compressor to stop filling up your air tanks, because if not, they're going to blow up. So it should automatically shut off your air compressor shut out no higher than 140 PSI. Now for testing purposes, you must identify the pressure at which the governor cutout occurred and verbalize the maximum pressure at which this occurs. Note, the air dryer exhausting should not be re referenced as governor cutout. Next test. This is the air compressor governor cut-in pressure test. So when is your air compressor automatically going to kick on when you start losing a lot of buildup pressure in your tank? So when your tanks get low, Compressor needs to automatically go on. So this is called the air compressor governor cut-in pressure test. To perform this test, the air pressure for the vehicle cannot be rising when the engine is running. With the air pressure at maximum pressure, begin slowly pumping the brake pedal to reduce the air tank pressure. Now watch the air pressure gauge between pumps to identify when the compressor cuts in and the needle starts to rise again. 
This must occur no lower than 85 PSI on a bus and no lower than 100 PSI for trucks. Now for testing purposes, identify where the air governor cuts in and compressor and verbalize the minimum pressure at which this can occur. Next test, testing your service brakes. Wait for normal air pressure, release the parking brake, now move the vehicle forward slowly at about 5 miles an hour and apply the brakes firmly using the brake pedal. Now note, any vehicle that pulls to one side or an unusual fill or a delayed stopping action. Now this test may show you problems which you otherwise would not know about until you needed the brakes on the road. It's time to test your knowledge. I'll ask you a few questions and you should know the answer in your mind. If you don't know the answer, please re-listen to this video. These t questions could be on your test. Question number one. What is a dual air brake system? Number two, what are slack adjusters? Number three, how can you check slack adjusters? Number four, how can you test the low pressure warning signal? Number five, how can you check the spring brake comes on automatically? And number six, what are the maximum leakage rates? Okay, we've completed section 5.2 and 5.3. In our next video, we'll continue with section 5.4.